What's up, everyone? It's America Plus. I'm your host, Cole McCormick. It's another week, another episode. What's going on, people? People, people, people. Welcome to the 10 p.m. recording session of America Plus. Folks, it's Sunday, June 18th. Wow, I cannot believe I'm recording so late at night. My work, Ruth's Chris, the kitchen, they scheduled me. On Father's Day. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Not good vibes. I don't like it. I didn't like it. I told them up front my schedule. I don't, I cannot work on Sunday mornings. I have another job. And they, they bring me in last week before they put out the schedule, like a few days before they put out the schedule, they call me in and I go, uh, yeah. And they go, uh, hey, uh, just so you know, uh, your schedule is overridden on holidays. I go, what? Your schedule is overridden? It doesn't, your schedule doesn't really matter until, like, if it's a holiday? I was like, what holiday? I didn't know it was Father's Day last week. I didn't know, I didn't know <laughs> it was coming up. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I said that to him last night. <gasps> my father's incredible. My father is strong. I'll talk about my dad soon. To finish this story. My boss really told me physically that my schedule does not matter and it will be overridden on a holiday. So I was like, okay, sure, whatever. So I'll come in. So again, we'll see how long this job lasts. I don't like being talking to. I I don't like being spoken to that way. Um, So that's why it's so late. Um, But it's totally, totally different vibes this week. Shannon's out of town. She's in Omaha. She had her high school reunion. She would probably hate me for like even saying that, but she had her 10 year high school reunion and I guess she had a good time. So she's, she's been there for the weekend. I'm home alone out here in LA, 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 la la land. And just like doing my thing, recording podcasts, talking to myself. It's having fun. <laughs> um, I got the lights off with, this is a totally different vibe. This is a lo-fi. I mean, it's a lo-fi experience. I, I don't have the music that I used a few weeks ago, but the lo-fi time, folks. Um, this week is phenomenal. Um, what I want to focus on are two different things. Um, mainly, you know what it is, America Plus narratives. Narratives. We're always talking about narratives here. We're talking about, I try to talk about cultural narratives along with my personal narratives in terms of what I believe and the stories I'm creating. And I also try to identify different narratives that I see forming, um, falling apart, yada, yada. Clearly I've had a strong, I like the narratives I've leaned into have been more pro meat. They've been, you know, pro nature, pro cow. Um, they've also been, uh, just like, I, I, I want to believe pro science. Uh, <laughs> and I wonder if you know where I'm going. There is this insane, this week was insane when it comes to the narratives of science colliding because a normal guy named Joe Rogan, well, hang on, sorry, almost knocked over my, almost knocked over my bong. Hang on, let me put this glass. Let me just make sure that's safe, okay? That was a present for my old job. Joe Rogan decided to interview RFK Jr. And of course, the world is listening. The entire nation is listening. This thing gets like tens of millions of downloads every freaking day. Everyone's listening to Joe Rogan and RFK Jr. Um, I don't want to focus on what was really discussed because, you know, if you're already listening to America Plus, you're probably already wanting America to be better, and that probably means you already know that America's no good, including their medical institutions. So going over what they talked about isn't very necessary because I can already agree to the general side that that they both are on uh while also supporting science and along with that we had a fascinating kerfuffle on twitter oh my god don't you love twitter twitter is like the best joe doesn't tweet joe decided to tweet this weekend which is more than amazing you know he usually just like does like simple promotions for like for his comedy shows and for the podcast but when he ca- whenever he t- whenever he talks about science, you know he's like he tends to be a bit more like like you know like he's Joe Rogan like he's prepared. 
And uh, the interesting thing was that RFK was talking about this insane, this insane truth about like how many vaccines have been increased throughout the years. Like there used to be like five and now there's 74 vaccines, including like double doses, you know, Um, just like these insane truths and why he would even be involved with anyone who would say that a vaccine harmed, harmed them or harmed a child or caused some sort of um, unalignment, knock something out of alignment within their brain and caused a certain neurological disorder. Why would he do that? And listening to him was super interesting. But the thing that I want to focus on is what Joe spoke on. You know, he he had like a five-minute like spiel, you know. He, he sort of just laid out the narratives. He laid out where he's coming from. And... What I'm witnessing here, the reason why I'm bringing Joe Rogan up is really because, or specifically this one episode, is because there lies an opportunity in the reaction of this and in the absorption of it. This is So here's the first clip. It's 18 seconds. Um, this is what he's talking about. When I had heard of you in the past, before I had read your book and before I'd met you, I had no information on you. But there was this narrative, and this narrative was you were anti-vax, and you were be- you believed in pseudoscience, and you were kind of loony. But- uh, can anyone agree with that? Can anyone, like, understand that? Sort of just like the vibe was that RFK was like a weird guy, you know, but there was really no information on him. And, you know, Rogan's talking about narratives, man. It's that specific word, narratives. You have tens of millions of people listening to that word. You know, I have hope that everyone is more awake than what the mainstream media might make me feel, you know. But here is this, like, I I, I grabbed an ISO. Like, I'm trying to hypnotize people. Like, (laughs) the beginning of the podcast last year, I was, like, calling myself a propagandist. And while I'm listening to this podcast, I was listening to it with Shannon before she left for the weekend. I was blown away by a certain phrasing that he said. Um, So here's his ISO that I just, that I am obsessed with. But there was this narrative. But there is this narrative. But there is this narrative. Hang on, let me go to it again. But there was this narrative. But there was this narrative. But there was this narrative. Uh, But there is this narrative, man. Like there is this narrative about COVID. The narrative about vaccines. The narrative about going outside. The narrative about, I'm not going to go into the pandemic emotions, but... There was this narrative. You have tens of millions of people listening to this. And what I'm looking for, what I'm praying for, is that people wake up. By the snap of my fingers and the clap of my hands, you will wake up from this sleep. Wake yourself, woman. Wake yourself, man. We are here. This is America. This is the 2024 election. This is life on earth. This is the future. This is us taking hold of our systems. This is us trying to unify and recourse. We are trying to correct course here, dude. We're trying to make our systems better. And here we got uh, Joe Schmo Rogan just talking about how he didn't have a lot, a, a lot of information. <laughs> he didn't have the information. <laughs> and he had a bad opinion. He had an incomplete thought. Could anyone else relate to that? Has that not been the um, the main way for manipulation? Has that not been the main way for for control over a person or over a, a society? You know, like come on now. But there was this narrative. Like that's serious. That's some serious shit. It's it's super serious and. My prayer is that Joe just speaking this, you know, like out of all the episodes that he that he might have that he's might have done with any doctor, Robert Malone, Peter McCullough, like anyone talking about COVID-19, anyone talking about pandemic and vaccines. My instinct says that this might be a certain moment and, you know, this might be a part of Kennedy's legacy. You know, this narratives on vaccines, you know, his work with the with the awareness of of what a vaccine could do.
could and might do. You know what I mean? And it's up to the person to trust this information. It's up to the person to trust this information. And while promoting it, there's this guy on on Twitter. This guy is uh, what's this guy's name? I got the photo up here. Let me let me try, let me check out the photo myself. This guy's name. Ooh, oh wait, hang on. Sorry, I totally screwed up. Whatever. This guy's name. This doctor's name. He's a virologist. He was on Joe Rogan before. He's a fat, tubby guy who doesn't work out and believes in vaccines. And his daughter's autistic. And he says that the vaccine did not cause his daughter's vac. He, the vaccine did not cause his daughter's uh, autism. And he like defends that, and he talks about that, and he has a whole career on that. And he he responds to Joe Rogan talking about how he's given anti-vaxxers a platform. And just s- simple s- simple TP structure here, this virologist is just in on this government narrative. And it's not important to call out what he's doing. You know, it's not, a, it, it's not necessary to try to um, construct some sort of like moral damnation on this fat tubby guy for for like totally being a shill for vaccines and big pharma. What I'm wanting is to just see like the plastic of it. I'm looking for the objective truth, the objectiveness of it. And I am so fucking entertained by this guy denying to have a debate. So so pretty much let me just describe what happened. So I'm sorry, it's 10 o'clock. I'm trying my best to describe this story. Let me just describe this podcast and Twitter experience. <laughs> Joe Rogan's promoting it. This virologist comments, I can't believe you support anti-vaxxers. Joe Rogan's like, well, if you disagree with me, how about you come back on and we'll do a debate with you and RFK. No time limits. I'll send 100K to your favorite charity. And then this, and then this guy's like, oh, no, I don't, I don't think so. No, I will. I really, if, if I debate him, then I'm giving him a voice. I don't want to give him a voice, so I shouldn't debate. And he just gives the most bullshit, like, fat boy answer of, like, how, why you don't want to do something. And I'm so, am I being rude? Am I being mean? Oh, well, I don't care. Pretty much he doesn't accept the debate. This virologist does not accept the debate, and he refuses to engage in the narrative. He refuses to engage in the discussion of the narrative. He simply seeks to push a narrative, to simply hold strong to a narrative. While there are opportunities to have these things be deconstructed, to have them be reconstructed, to have them be absorbed by people. You know, um... This next clip of uh, of Rogan, this is um what he thinks is like the way, you know. This is um this is it. Through this time where there was so much uncertainty and people were very confused and also suspicious. They were suspicious that they're being told a very uh, a narrative and they were starting to remember that hey, this has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medications, th- these are, they have happened in the past. They just never happened where this is like the whole country is being convinced that this is the way to do it. When I was listening to this with Shannon, I was like, holy shit, holy shit, Shannon, hang on, hang on, hang on, holy shit, Shannon. I might be high, but what he just said was insane. Let me play that again. Here's the ISO. This has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medications, this has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medications. Yeah, uh, that's like some real shit. I. That right there is like the spellbinder. These kind of narratives about medications. This has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medications. This has happened in the past. Get that in your head. Get that in your mother's head. Get that in the mainstream head. Put this in your song. Put this in your album. Put this in your movie. Put this in your painting. Put this in anything. Put this in your post. These kind of narratives about medications. This has happened in the past. Dude, all they talk about is RFK's what, who is Anthony Fauci, and Anthony Fauci completely murdered people during the AIDS pandemic. Like, that's what fucking happened. These kind of narratives about medications. It's fucking forever. They've happened in the past before, and they just brought it to us. 
They happened in the past and we're going to forget it again. <laughs> 2020 already happened. The pandemic's already in the past, folks. This has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medication. It's never going to stop. But there was this narrative. It's never going to stop. My great grandkid might be on antidepressants. Have we thought about that? Has anyone drank to that yet? I'm freaking worried, dude. I'm freaking worried. I don't want that to be the case. I don't want to be like that. I don't want there to be these certain narratives that control earth, that control people's actions, that, that, um, that can make people afraid. That's not good. So I'm trying to connect dots here. What I'm really connecting is the existence of this episode, uh, of this America Plus episode, building on top of the Joe Rogan episode, building on top of every No Agenda episode, trying my best to push myself as a human being, trying my best to elevate the show, elevate the um, how information is absorbed through this, uh, th- through this show, through America Plus. I pray that you and your families are seeking truth and wisdom throughout all things, no matter the hardship. Remember what you have gone through. Don't hold on to the emotion of what it was like, but remember how you got through it. Remember the determination. This is where the hero's journey comes into play. If we're going to learn anything as a collective from the pandemic... I hope that it is that we got through it. We got through it. That's so powerful. And if anyone is tied to any other narrative, then they are seeking control over you. But if someone brings up a narrative that you were strong enough to push through the most horrific years of your adult life, then you, then that person is a friend of yours. And you are free. You have been free. The struggle, any struggle that you have ever gone through has set you more free. And from my spiritual perspective, I think the pandemic was um, a collective hurdle that we must now grow from. And a part of that is understanding the narratives as individuals taking in this information. I'm not trying to push, and I'm not trying to educate. I, yes, I'm not, I am not trying to educate. What I'm trying to do is simply celebrate and identify that times are changing. And I want to do my best to lead, and I want to do my best to speak. I want to do my best to be a part of this. And I commend Joe Rogan. If I ever meet Joe Rogan, if I'm ever, if I'm ever blessed to be on the Joe Rogan experience while talking about whatever the fuck I'm doing, um, you know, like, I know I will be sitting in front of a legend. I know I will be sitting in front of a real man who speaks truth and is, and loves creativity and loves to laugh like he loves life. You know, like, this is the type of person who's, who's talking to, to Robert Kennedy Jr. This is the type of person who is thinking critically. You understand me? I'm not trying to paint Joe Rogan as a god here. I'm I'm not like I used to be a Joe Rogan fanboy. Now I'm just a casual Spotify user. You know, Joe is literally just a regular guy. I really believe that. I really believe Joe's a regular guy who just likes to do cold baths. <laughs> I think it's possible. I think you can have close to a billion dollars in your account and still be a nice guy. And I'm just willing to put my money on Rogan. And I'm willing to like try to take some lead of intellect, you know, some sort of like, oh, where is he going here? Do I agree? You know, like you're free to do that. As a human being, you are free to disagree with people that you listen to. And that's something that like, that's really something the mainstream nar- narratives do not agree with. That's something they, they just simply cannot compute with that. They, the, the, the mainstream narratives, the government narratives, the advertising narratives, they cannot allow for disagreement. It needs to be this way or no way. This way or you don't exist. But there was this narrative. It needs to be this narrative. It absolutely does. 
<clears throat> and if it's not, then like you're not in it. You're not a part of it, dude. Like, I guess you're not in Hollywood. I guess, uh, oh, you're not vaccinated? I guess you're not on the lot. <laughs> oh, you don't have the magic juice? I guess you don't get to make a movie. <laughs> Isn't that silly? That's like some for real rules out here. So, I take all that in, and I pray for America, and I pray for our systems, and I pray for you, and I pray for myself that us as a collective, us as a people, as a species can just see the manipulation that we went through, and we can take um, take strength in knowing that we got through it together. We got through it somewhat together, you know, like, like I, I, I feel like there's like some loose wires connecting, like. We're on this new vibe, dude. Like, I got this instinct for, like, new vibes, and I'm telling you, I feel like we're, like, on a new vibe. Maybe just because it's summer. It's just a new season. Maybe that's what I'm feeling. Maybe it's because, it's like, it's dark in this room right now, but I just feel like we're going through something right now. Again, we're going through another thing. It's another thing. And so we're just trying to talk about it, dude. Just be aware of the narratives that are around you, and don't be afraid. I'm going to do my best to talk about what's important. And I feel as though this is important. This has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medications. This has happened in the past. These kind of narratives about medications. But there was this narrative. Folks, we are now heading on into the boosts. <laughs> Folks, Value for Value is a... I'm sorry, America Plus is a value for value show. Uh, if you don't know what value for value is, uh, all that means is... You get to determine the value of this podcast, of this wonderful, wonderful podcast. Um, we're going through the boost and some more creativity stuff, so stick with me here. Um, my creativity stuff, r r real quick, real quick, real quick. I got an exclusive on my creativity stuff. Oh, I need the lights on. Hang on. I need the lights on. Lights on. Clap on. Um, I got a story exclusive for America Plus right here. Um, it's about Purple Chicken Man. Um now, when it comes to my narratives, these narratives are super important. Um, so I'm developing this animated short film, right? And I have this character that's coming up at the very end in the form of a Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, post credit scene. It's going to be really enticing and exciting and mysterious, and it's going to grab you in. And it's about Purple Man Chicken. And uh, Purple Man Chicken is a character that I came up with a long time ago. I got the picture up right now. This is a pixelated version of it. I'm looking to bring this into a 3D animation. I'm looking for it to be a character that I can play via motion capture, po per uh, performance capture, perhaps. Purple Man Chicken is super important, and I've been trying to figure out um, his story. You know, he's gone through a transformation. He's Purple Man Chicken. He's serious and silly at the same time, and he has a very specific biological connection to the universe. I've been struggling with this, and today in the shower, I came back from work, and I got it. It came to me in, a, in, a, in an instant. I know the story. I know the basic. I know the basic, basic core emotion, emotional story for Purple Man Chicken. Um, and you're going to hear it first, folks. This is it. So this is... So you, this is... Th this will not... This... What I'm about to read will not be in the short film, okay? But it is the story, the, a part of the story, the core of the story arc for this character in whatever thing else that I do in the future, okay? So just keep that in mind here. Here's the core story. Purple Man Chicken is an inventor. While building a time machine to go back in time to tell his ex he loves her sooner than he did before. It does not work. And he accidentally turns himself into a man chicken. He has chickens on his property. Now he has to find a way to love himself while the world gives no love. What do you think? Isn't that fun? Isn't that silly? I love it. I think it can be like, it's a self-love story, dude. So he goes through this transformation, right? So, okay. So here's this idea. He's this guy. His name's, maybe his name's Richard. I don't know. He's a normal guy. And he has this girl. And, you know, they're in love, and but he's, like, a little reclusive. He's, like, a little, like, in his world, you know? And she's, like, really, like, bubbly and really aware and really just, like, she's, like, she's like she loves the outdoors and she loves the experience. And he's, like, just, like, in his little, like, corner. 
and these are that's like the duality of this relationship and you know there'd be like a breakup you know she would leave him and this thing would and he would be so heartbroken you know but but you know richard he's this inventor you know he um he loves inventing things he loves like fiddling with things he loves science you know he loves um all these things he he loves solving problems and you know his girl leaving him you know that's that's one of the biggest problems in his life like now he's alone and he didn't want to be alone he never wanted to be alone he he loved her and it took him a while to figure out that he just didn't say it fast enough and he didn't say it enough and if if he could build something if he could build a machine that could tell her that would allow him to tell her that he loves her sooner maybe maybe she she wouldn't leave him and so he makes this insane machine and he fiddles around and he goes for it. And I'm feeling fucking hyped up right now, dude. It's purple mayo chicken, man. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's going to be wild, dude. <sighs> I'm hyped about this. I'm so happy I figured this out. I'm so happy I figured this out. Like, I'm sweating right now. Like, the window's closed and I'm, it's a little humid, but like, I'm sweating because I'm so excited. Purple man chicken is going to be so rememberable, and you're going to love it. Um, but anyway, value for value. Um, Purple, Ma- uh, Purple Man Chicken is a part of value for value. If you ha- if you like that story about Purple Man Chicken, send me some money. Support the show. Become a producer if you want to. Your support supports me by uh, by creating more things. You know, um, Value for value is mainly through Fountain. If you want to uh, download the Fountain app, please do. Go to value4value.info for more info. Then download the Fountain.fm app. It's the best way to support the show. This is the main way where I'm building the community for America Plus. This is the main place. Fountain is the main place where I am discussing things, where I am putting more energy into it. Um, This platform is evolving. Value for Value is evolving. This is where you can give your time, talent, and treasure Um, just by you listening. Thank you. If you want to give any of your talent, if you want to help me out with any of my projects, if you want to have give any contribution reach out to me and tell me what you want to share and the treasure i prefer bitcoin and i also have a paypal so through fountain you can send me satoshis if you want to support this these ideas and these narratives if you if you just want to give an honest artist uh some support like please do it through through fountain and give me some boosts i'm going to be reading some boosts right now uh these are people who saw value in last week last week was a, a, a lot of fun uh, there was number 74, Megalopolis. I discussed uh, Francis Ford Coppola's newest movie coming out next year in 2024. Um, Miss Megalopolis, I went all into it. You got to check it out. He's He's been spent, he spent over 40 plus years, 50 plus years making this movie and he finally filmed it. Francis Ford Coppola finally filmed this freaking movie. And it's coming out next year. And uh, so that was like the main focus. And here are the people who loved it. At Frodo, I got two people who loved it. At Frodo33, he sends in 100 sats. Thank you, Frodo. He says, great job once again. Never boring. Thank you. Boost me, bitch. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Frodo. Uh, Boost me again. I dare you. Uh, And then the next two are from our good friend at Joel W. He sends in a couple satchel of Richards, 1,111 sats. He he says, in my opinion, Coppola created the greatest cliffhanger in film history with the ending of Godfather 3. I have wanted nothing more from movies than a part four to see Vincent as head of family and his reaction to Mary's murder. Boost. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Give me some Godfather 4 shit, dude. Let's do it. Like, write that script, dude. Doesn't that go into, like, when the story ends? Like, there's always this, like... The meme with uh, w- w- with George Lucas is that like he kept fiddling with the story, he kept fiddling with the edit and with the effects, you know. And Francis Ford Coppola has been somewhat accused of that, you know. He he re-edited the third one. Joel, tell me what you thought of. Did you see the re-edit of Godfather Three, the Coda version? Um, I haven't watched it yet, but I have. <laughs> this is the funny thing. I have like the whole Blu-ray, but I don't have a Blu-ray player, so that's stupid, Cole. Uh, <laughs> but Godfather 4 would be legit 
if Megalopolis makes money, I think he might be open for Godfather 4. I think it could happen, you know. Uh, Al Pacino, he has another kid on the way. He might need some money. Like, he might need, you know, I, I think I think these guys need to keep working. These old men, these guys in their 70s and 80s need to keep on moving. Like, it's wild. Uh, last one from Joel W. Another Satchel Richards. He says, this movie sounds interesting. Sort of like, short of getting too annoyingly political, it's almost gotta be good. Yeah. Boostar. Boostar. One more. Boost. Love it, dude. Love it. Um, yeah, Megalopolis, Megalopolis sounds legit, dude. We'll see if the master can do it again. We'll see if he can pull together an incredible cast for an, an incredible film. Um, I, for one, will be their opening night. Thank you to all those people who uh, supported me value for value style. I really appreciate it. Um, I continue to get better with the value for value. If I could just speak on Bitcoin for a moment and the entire philosophy of value for value. Um, I want to reiterate my love for it and my commitment to it because the most recent development in the podcasting 2.0 space is the development of being able to switch value blocks. You're able to switch Bitcoin wallets um, while you're live streaming and you can, if someone boosts you, if someone sends you Bitcoin to you, there's a live, like, it's like a track, a, a train track switch. Like, you can just switch the value to go to this person over there. And that's, incre- like, the more that develops, the more I'm getting involved with that, the more I want to set up my creative process like that. I There is no better way to be... Um, no, I'm sorry. There is no, a no better way to create anything than through value for value as at least the foundation. You know, for young artists, for young creatives, you know, like no one's making any money. But here I am, first year and a half of a podcast, and I can honestly say I made $100. I made $100. No, no, no. no. I, at the time, it was 80 bucks. I made 80 bucks in Bitcoin from the podcast in my first year. Isn't that wild? Now, that's no money at all, but, like, that's money that I got for me that no one else that I know doing a podcast that doesn't have, like, first of all, everyone I know who's doing a podcast does not have sponsors, so no one's making money. Everyone else I know who's doing anything creative is barely making money, not even making money. They're making money because they, they work at a creative agency or something like that. They work at a studio. But no, that's like, no, they're not doing anything creative that's making the money. I'm like, I am so on the bleeding edge of this shit. It's incredible. And I'm just blessed. And I continue to put the value in it. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what, tell me what is on your mind when it comes to these topics of narratives, because we need to keep discussing them and we need to keep figuring out what are we going to tell our kids? What are we going to tell the future generations? Are we going to allow some corrupt governments to write the history books? Or are we going to take back the history books? Are we going to be honest with the history books? We got to talk about that as a species. I believe that. That's what America Plus is. And that's America Plus, bitch. Stay free.